The main deal with Chebyshev's theorem is, if you remember in the last section, I explained to you standard deviation for bell-shaped distributions followed a nice rule. We called it the empirical rule. And we said 68% of the data lies in one standard deviation about the mean, and then we had 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean, and so on. That was a rule of thumb. That's what empirical rule means. It means that it's not exact, but it's, it's usually true for large data sets with bell-shaped data. So for the problems that we've done previously, it was always stated that the data is bell-shaped. All right, and that empirical rule applies, uh, and it lets you kind of gauge what the standard deviation means for that data. Chebyshev's theorem is a rule of thumb that tells you what the standard deviation means, the same as before, for data that's not bell-shaped, okay? For data that's not bell-shaped. So that's the main difference. So if you remember back to the last section, the ways in which we were using it to make some estimations about, um, you know, about those problems we solved, Chebyshev's theorem is going to do the same thing. It's just a little more broad. It allows us to apply kind of a rule of thumb when data is not bell-shaped. Now, I will say that in most cases, your data will be bell-shaped in most cases. So this is not quite as important, in my opinion, as the empirical rule that came before it. Uh, but it is important. The other thing is... Chebyshev's theorem is not exact because it depends on the exact shape of your distribution. You know, we had this bell shaped, right? Well, there are other shapes out there that might, that might be going on in certain other populations that you might study. Who knows? It might be rectangular distributions or whatever. I mean, it's just impossible to say ahead of time. So Chebyshev's theorem is not, not as exact as the other rule that we've used. And also, Chebyshev's theorem only gives us a minimum that applies. In other words, it doesn't tell us that 95% is going to fall between this or this. It gives us a lower value. Chebyshev's theorem is going to tell us at least X percent is going to fall between one standard deviation and so on. So it's going to give us a lower, a lower boundary on what could be true. It's not going to be as exact, so it's not as useful as the other empirical rule. So, but we still need to learn it and use it. Now, there is a lot of words to Chebyshev's theorem, and I've already written them on the board, so I'm going to slide this back, and you're going to see a wall of text. you got to just kind of break through that and realize that, trust me, when I tell you it's not going to be hard, it's not hard. So just read it with me. I will explain it to you, and then we will go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at Chebyshev's theorem right now. And here is what it is. Chebyshev's theorem says, let's just read it, the percentage of the data that lies within k standard deviations, I'll explain that in a minute, is at least, I'll explain that in a minute, 1 over 1 over k squared for k greater than 1. That is the actual theorem. What's below here is a couple of um, you know, examples of it, I guess you might say, quick examples. So, usually when we're trying to apply these empirical rules, we're trying to figure out you know, within one standard deviation, within two standard deviations, within three standard deviations, how many percent, how much percent is going to lie between the boundaries there between two standard deviations, let's say. So the way Chebyshev's theorem is written is it says the percentage of the data that lies within k standard deviations. So k can be greater than one. So it only really works for two standard deviations, three standard deviations, four standard deviations, and so on. That's what k is. And the percentage of the data that lies within it is 1 minus 1 over k squared. So, to take an example, when k is equal to 2, that means I want to figure out what percentage of the data lies within two standard deviations. So it says at least 1 over 1 minus 2 squared, I'm just plugging it in to what Chebyshev's theorem is, is 1 minus 1 fourth, that's what happens when you square 1 half, and 1 minus a fourth is 3 fourths. And 3 fourths, as you all know, is 0.75, which is 75%. So what this is saying, forget about this down here. Forget about this up here. I could have just kind of just told you this. What it's telling you is, if your data is not bell-shaped, if you're looking in plus or minus two standard deviations around the mean, then at least 75% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. Remember from the normal or for the bell-shaped distribution, it was 95% lie within two standard deviations of the mean. Chebyshev's theorem is not telling us that. It's telling us that at least 75% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. This applies for any other distribution other than a bell shape, which bell shape is most common, so you're not going to use this very much. All right. Now for three standard deviations, which is as far as we're going to take it here, at least one over one... Uh, 
one third squared, which is one minus one ninth, right? Uh, one minus one ninth is eight ninths, and when you convert that to a percentage, you're gonna get 88.9%. So what it's telling you is 88.9% of the data lies within three standard deviations of the mean, but at least 88.9%. So that means that um, it could be more than 88.9%, it could be 90%, it could be 92%. Notice in the case of the normal distribution or the bell-shaped distribution, for three standard deviations it was actually 99.7%. Okay, so Chebyshev's theorem is giving us a lower limit. It's telling us that for three standard deviations at least 88.9% of the data lies within three sigma. And for two sigma, at least 75% of the data lies within that. One sigma doesn't make sense because the way the theorem is written, it really only works when k, which is the standard deviation you care about, is greater than one, not equal to one. So you really don't apply Chebyshev's theorem for one sigma, usually, okay? So that is what it is. Now, this is gonna be much, much easier to understand if we just work a quick problem. And these are very simple because the work has been done. There's really no calculations, hardly anything for you to do, except apply it. So the first question says, in a town, the average income is $34,200 with a standard deviation of $2,200. What percentage of homes earn between $29,800 and $38,600? So it's the same kind of thing. We're given the mean, we're given the standard deviation, all right? Uh, and we're trying to find out what percentage of people earn between two brackets, but we are not told that this is a bell-shaped distribution. So we really cannot use the empirical rule that we've used before because we don't know that this is bell-shaped. So instead we have to use Chebyshev's theorem because it gives us a more conservative kind of a, kind of a, minimum, uh, a minimum, minimum limit there. So what we're going to do is write down what we know. The mean of this data is um, the mean is 34, 200. The standard deviation is 2200, all right? So what we need to start doing is adding and subtracting the mean just to kind of figure it out. And I think we can see really quickly that if we look at the mean plus one sigma, it's 34, 200 plus 2200, 2200. And what you get for that is 36, 400. Now 36,400 doesn't, doesn't match either one of my boundaries in my problem. I have 29,800 and I have 38,600. So I'm gonna switch and go ahead and try to figure out uh, for two sigma. So if I look at two sigma, I have the mean plus two sigma, which is 34,200 plus two times 2,200. And when I do this, I get the 38,600 that I need. And then I'm gonna bet you $2 that when I do the subtraction, when I subtract two times sigma, I'm gonna get 29,800, and that's exactly what I get. So when I go in here, I know the mean, I know the standard deviation. The problem says, what percentage of homes earn between 29,800 and 38,600? This is exactly plus or minus two sigma about this mean, but it's not a normal distribution. So we have to go back, since it's not bell-shaped, and go back to Chebyshev's theorem and realize that when we're looking at two standard deviations, at least 75% of the data lie within two standard deviations. So all you have to write literally on your test is at least. It's important to have those words because it could be greater. So it's say at least 75% lie in, I'm just gonna put this range so I don't have to keep writing this over and over again. At least 75%. And when I say this range, it lies within the range of 29,800 and 38,600. All right, so that's basically what you're doing. You're just trying to apply it. Um, and in this case, you know, we've already kind of pre-calculated. Chebyshev's theorem is actually this up here. It's telling you for however many standard deviations you care about, you can get the percentage, but most of the time you're looking at two or three standard deviations. So we just kind of calculate and present the results for you. Next problem, water bills in January Average $230 with a standard deviation of $58. What percentage have a bill between $56 and $404? So notice this does not say it's bell-shaped. So because it doesn't say that, we really can't assume that. We cannot use the easy, um, regular empirical rule. So we have to use Chebyshev's theorem. So what we're going to do then is go look at 
how many standard deviations this is. I'm going to kind of guess that it's two sigma just based on eyeballing it. So if the mean, so I'm gonna write this over here, the mean is 230 and the standard deviation is 58. So for two sigma, the mean plus two standard deviations would be 230 plus two times 58. So for two sigma, it would be, actually, I'm gonna guess, I did the wrong thing here. I'm gonna guess this, that it's gonna be three sigma because of the way the numbers work out. So just to save a little bit of time. So I'm guessing this is three sigma. Let me check. 230 plus three standard deviations gives me $404. And that's exactly right. Now let's go back and look at what happens. Uh, actually, this is three sigma. So for three sigma, I take the mean plus three sigma like that. Now let's look at the mean minus three sigma. 230 minus 3 times 58. When you do this, what you would get is $56. So in my problem it says, what percentage of people have a bill between 56 and $404? Between 56 and $404 means that it is lying exactly within three sigma about that mean. Three standard deviations. So for three sigma, at least 88.9% of the data lie within three sigma of the mean, and that applies to any uh, distribution you have. So we write down at least 88.9% uh, lie uh, between $56 and $404. So there you go, at least 88.9. Now it's important for you to know that this is a lower limit. This means that it in fact could be 92%, right, of the data lie between these boundaries. It could be 95%, it could be whatever because it depends on the exact shape of the distribution. Chebyshev's rule is a very broad rule, right? It gives you a lower limit. If you don't know if it's bell-shaped, bell-shaped is what most data that you're gonna study is gonna be, so we have kind of rock-solid rules for that. But if you don't know if it's bell-shaped, you use this guy and it gives you a nice lower limit. So it at least lets you, it lets you know what roughly it is, but it doesn't give you any kind of exact or even a very good approximation because it kind of depends on the exact shape of the distribution that you have. But that's Chebyshev's theorem. I think you would agree by reading this, if you just read this, it would look like Greek, right? But really, it's just trying to give you that same estimation. So Chebyshev's theorem really applies for two sigma, three sigma, four, if you had to study four sigma or five sigma, you could get these other percentages just simply by using what we have up here. Uh, it wouldn't be that hard to do, but in reality, most of the time you really care about looking a couple of standard deviations around the mean. You're typically not looking for data way far about or around the mean, usually. So make sure you understand this. Make sure you can apply Chebyshev's theorem. It's pretty easy. Uh, and then follow me on to the next section where we will continue building our skills and statistics. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.